the first part of the Discovery Valley is over the, uh, the trunk that's, that's over there. And that's very much a, a galloping, flowing fence with a ditch in front of it. Then when they come to number seven here, they've got to very much to slow down because they've got the little narrow hedge on the, which is like representing the bonnet of the Discovery. Uh, but behind that, just one stride afterwards and down quite a steep hill, is the ditch. And the horses won't see that ditch until really they're just about to, to take off. And so the riders have got to come at a speed where they give the horses time to see where they're going to put their feet on the landing. Many horses will just go one stride and over the ditch, but some will go one stride and put a little shuffle in and then cross the ditch. But then riders have a real choice. Uh, they can either go the quick flowing way, which is two strides, to the last element, which is another uh, brush discovery with the, with the bonnet, or they can just hang out a bit to the right and go with three strides. They will have to take the time. There's less risk, but it's slower. And then what is really tiring for the horse is when they land, they've got to pick up speed again. It's going to be slower and more tiring for the horse. And uh, of course, as they go around the course, the more fences they make tiring, uh, the more they're going to be facing time penalties when they get towards the end. Well, the Land Rover Tratrachi is sort of one of the traditional fences at, at, at Burley. Um, and the water is never the rider's uh, favourite because there's always the thought of having that early bath, which uh, pleases the crowd but doesn't actually make the rider's day. Um, but as it's the first water here, I've been a little bit kind at the, at the beginning. They come down into the, um, the lower trout hatchery uh, behind me, where they've got the goose's nest. Quite a big hedge, quite narrow, with, with the eggs in it and the goose on, uh, alongside. They've got to come downhill, which is a little unbalancing for the horses. Then they've got two nice strides in the water to jump, which is really quite a big, big hedge. And then they've got a new exit this time, um, coming uh, this side of the big Wellingtonia tree. And, uh, coming on, a, on an arc, or all in one arc, and that's really going to give them the opportunity to press the accelerator and come with a little bit of power or pace to the, the two hedges here that we see in the upper part of the trout hadry. So um, the rider's ability to control the horse and control the direction of the horse is really um, crucial here. I think that, combined with the ability for riders to have a stronger and more powerful approach, um, should make the two hedges here um, ride, a, ride a little better. When a horse jumps up a step, it actually has to go higher than if it was jumping a fence of the same dimension, because it's got to go high enough in the air in order to be able to land on, on its front legs. So they're, they're two big efforts for, for the horse. And we're just approaching seven minutes here. So uh, you know, with the terrain here at Burley, horses are just starting to get a little weary because they've, they've been going uphill for a, for a, a, a long time. This year we've um, combined the power at the first two steps with a little bit of precision um, here at the top because they've got uh, one stride which uh, is uh, so the horses and riders have, have more time but the angled hedge here is tantalizingly going away to the left and so everything in the horse's mind will be thinking left and let me go left and uh, it's up to the, uh, yeah, the <coughs> scale and the precision of the rider to say, no, 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 I don't want you to go left, I want you to go straight on over this hedge, which is um, not a small hedge.